Hey guys, I'm Josh with NEA Performance Plus, and I'm here with Jason Klein, owner of NEA Performance Plus. Behind us, we've got this 89 Jeep Wagoneer that they've been building. Today, we're gonna to do a walk around of the vehicle and show you guys everything that's been done to it. Uh, it's got a lot of things inside and out. Uh, I think you guys are really gonna like it. I'm gonna hop behind the camera and we're gonna start uh, going around it and showing you guys what we've got. Jason, I guess we need to just start from the ground up. Uh, another thing's been it. put on a new frame and suspension, everything's been redone. Why don't we, why don't we start there and, and go from there? Well, we kind of, uh, we started uh, with some 392 Rubicon wheels um, and tires. We got them off 392 Rubicon. The reason we've done that, I like to stay with Jeep. I, I like how it said Jeep in the center. I really wanted that good Jeep feel. Um, so we've got those going on there. Uh, thanks to our fellas there at uh, Tariff Lakes, we was able to upgrade the brake system to disc brakes front and rear. Uh, we went with the larger disc brakes, um, that, which helped the stop and power with some more horsepower that we've got. We uh, worked with Dana and got the Dana 44, uh, Super Dana 44 front axle. Um, that right there uh, allows us to have uh, you know, a good locking differential up front. And we've also got a Dana 44 in the rear. So we've, uh, we've got those in here modified to fit uh, the wagon ear. You know, we had to do a lot of work on the suspension. We, we got with our buddies over there at Rough Country and was able to um, get that suspension. Uh, we, we used one of their suspensions. We modified it to fit the wagon ear. We had to shorten length and arms and stuff, but we do have a true long arm suspension on this thing. We got with our buddies over at AccuTune and they helped us uh, fit this thing out with some Fox uh, coolovers with two and a, uh, their two and a half inch Fox coolovers. They have uh, remote reservoirs. They're totally adjustable on the rebound and the compression. So we worked with them and got these in there. They have 12 inches of travel front and rear. Um, so we've got that going on. We uh, got a set of NFAB Nerf bars, as you can see right there. We've uh, modified them also to fit. We, luckily, uh, our sister company, uh, Arkansas Industrial Manufacturing, uh, we was able to um, go ahead and modify brackets for that. And the biggest thing that we modified on this is we used a actual Jeep uh, Wrangler JK frame. Uh, we took it, we took every mount off of it. We custom built every bracket on there to fit the uh, Jeep body and also for the coolovers and things and for the uh, long arm suspension. So we spent quite a bit of time engineering that out. We also fit this uh, vehicle with a um, 5.3 out of a, um, a Tahoe. We used a Tahoe style engine. We went with aluminum block, we went the six speed transmission, uh, really up the horsepower on this thing. This thing probably had about 120 horsepower to the wheels. Now it's got about 330 to the wheels. We plan on probably even adding a supercharger to it later. We just haven't uh, haven't done that yet, but currently the thing runs and shifts out very nice. We do have 14 gears in it. We stayed with more of a stock uh, height tire because we wanted it to be like an overland rig, something that we could drive that wouldn't kill the bank on fuel mileage, but also would perform well off road. So these are about a 33 inch tall tire. We uh, also uh, painted the outside. We used uh, we put a textured finish on it to give it that off road appeal. We, um, we custom painted the, um, as you can see, the uh, black on there that's more like the 70s style model Wagoneers. We like that look best, but we did the texture paint job. Uh, it is the original color. Uh, we did stay with that. It's a little bit hard to see it here. It does actually have a little bit of metal flake in the paint job. We left some of the original chrome on it. We thought that was just a, a good retro fit for the vehicle. We wanted it to be modern but yet retro so uh, we stay with that we upgraded the mirrors to um, we use the uh, fj cruiser style mirrors we wired them back in where they still work electrically uh, we've got uh, a lot of features on this thing that didn't come stock uh, we've added keyless entry uh, so we've got it where it locks and unlocks with the key um, we've also uh, got the back glass where it will roll down remotely as well so um, that way on a Jeep Wagoneer, you have to get in the inside uh, to open the rear gate. And so that was something that we spent some time on getting that to uh, operate the way we wanted it to. Hey, Jason, let's talk a little bit about, I know you guys did some work on this bumper here. Yes, sir. Took a stock bumper and did quite a bit of modifications to it. Let's, let's yeah, go we, over that. We actually started with the rugged ridge bumper. Uh, it didn't quite fit exactly the way we wanted to. Of course, they were made for more of a JK style deal. We took the original kind of centerpiece and we modified, we added this light bar in there. We've got Rough Country Black Series lights in it, uh, just like the, way, uh, like, like the way they look on there. We, we custom cut all this, like I said, our sister company AIM helped us with that. We, we cut all these out, we fit all the 
We've got backlit uh, rough country lights in there. We'll turn them on in a minute. Uh, but we have modified both the front and rear bumper to fit this profile the way we want it to. We fit it with a Warren winch there, uh, a VR T and a S. So we're happy with that winch. We, we like the uh, I like everything. I like the rope on it. Don't don't stick your hands when you're rolling that cable out, man. That's worth a lot when you're oh, yeah. out in the wild. We, uh, as you can see, we've painted part of this bumper, uh, the grill, sorry, uh, black, and we've uh, went with some original chrome in it. That way, it gives it that kind of steel retro fit. To yeah, the, it looks good. It really sets off the black, and it's a good mix of black and chrome. It's yeah. really good looking. That's what that's what we anticipate on this rig. Yeah, we're we're happy with the build. The drivability is so much better, uh, Josh, than, than it was prior. Uh, I know. A lot of us has been in these rigs maybe as kids and, and even as adults, but the drivability is decent on them, but uh, the riding stuff is, is pretty uh, pretty rough as far as what it is now. This thing rides smoother than my Ford Raptor. So. <laughs> I bet it does. Yeah. Jason, let's take a look at the rear here. And, yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on in the back here. Um, a lot of modifications. Yeah. A lot of modifications. Uh, the biggest thing uh, we started with here, again, was a rugged ridge bumper. We've still actually got rugged ridge on this. Uh, I really hope to get with them about a rooftop tent and, and getting this thing where it will really be a, an overlander rig. But going back to the bumper, we've modified this JK bumper to fit the back. We've used also a rough country light that we have that was uh, that is able to be kicked on for reverse, especially if you're you're in the woods somewhere. Looks like we've got a backup camera on. Yes, there sir. Too. We got a backup camera there that's uh, in with the Alpine head unit that we also have navigation and stuff on as well. Um, like I said a while ago in the video was uh, something we added to this thing uh, is this rear roll down. I, I remotely put that rear glass on a roll down like that so that you can access. Originally you had to have the key to put in here. Right. But uh, now then we are able to access it like this. And now uh, this is where it gets interesting. Excuse me, interesting. We've got uh, a pretty cool setup back here. Some uh, Molly panels. Yes. Uh, again, our sister company, Aim. Uh, we got with them. We designed these Molly panels to custom fit this wagon here. There is a lot you can do with these Molly panels. We have kind of set this up for an Overlander survival type rig. Um, we have outfitted it with a. AC converter here to uh, this will actually be big enough to run a coffee pot to skill saw so uh, it also is charging right now our uh, stream light when we kick it on right here we can charge our stream light right up and, and do what we need to there we also used an ARB dual stage air compressor in case we got out there and uh, needed some air for something needed to air tire up or you know blow something off or whatever we would need it for uh, work on a firearm or whatever um, we've got uh, of course I have a uh, uh, a squirrel dog that I like to take with me, uh, a couple of them, and I, I've got their collars here. I've got my GPS tracker for them. When I close this up, this actually would serve for my dog box if I would like it to, because my seat, he can't go anywhere when I shut this. Right. They're able to stay down here. That way it doesn't get all over my leather seats and stuff. I've also got it uh, fitted with uh, my AR there. Uh, I've got some different mags. I've got a couple different styles of ARs, so I've got different mags for different ARs. and. Uh, I know people kind of like those. Uh, also got my med kit there. If you're like me, I'm good at hurting myself, and uh, <laughs> I like to have something there to uh, maybe help me take care of that. So. Well, while we're back here, uh, looks like the dog would have some good tunes to listen to. Got some upgraded yeah. speakers back here. Yes, sir. Let me get this. We've got we've incorporated uh, Alpine speakers throughout this rig. We went with six and a half inch main speakers. That is a eight. We've got a box built behind that. We have an amp, 500 watt amp, pushing that thing. Does sound very good compared to um, what we we got in the past uh, with these rigs. I think they come out with some Jensen four and a half. So mm -hmm. the Alpine six and a half was definitely an upgrade for this rig. Right. So, and on the molly panel, you might not can see it very good. We'll get another angle of it, but I have my bow and stuff mounted to the other side of it. Um, I'm able to put actually even another AR in there and still be able to tie stuff down to the top and the bottom is what's cool about this yeah. rig. So, it also adds a lot of security. Uh, if you break into this rig, uh, we, we're going to incorporate a bulletproof glass on the back. So, when that's shut, even if you broke the glass out of this thing, you could not still get to our firearm. Right. So, it's another safety issue as well keeps kids and, and other people from breaking in this thing right. and getting to it, your uh, you know stuff that you you spend a lot of money on care right. about so. well that's a very versatile setup there too you can use that for just about anything you can 
like you said, oh, for yeah. people who are interested in overlanding, they can camping. have all their camping gear yes. and, and survival gear, or right. uh, you could use it to mount just about anything. What's handy too with the Wagoneer, Josh, is uh, we're able to tumble and fold that seat. That's actually a, a factory option, and you can actually put a piece of four by eight plywood in this thing and haul wow. it. You know, so um, you could sleep in that thing if you needed to, and you could. You, I mean, it's really endless what you can do with these Wagoneers. They was really ahead of their time in a lot of ways and just overlooked. Yeah. You know, these came. These things came out with power seats and uh, even flip switch four wheel drive as far as that came. Right. Yeah, it looks really good incorporating the original layout of the, the tailgate and the, the carpet and everything, but having these custom mullet handles really right. brings it current and, and lets you have a lot of different options. Well, it gives you storage and space that you normally wouldn't have had. You know, right. you, you normally would not have had this space. It would be just useless space, and still we've almost still got all the original room that we had in the first place. We did, if you kind of notice, the headliner is black. We kind of two-toned this thing a little bit. So um, kind of give it that a little bit of a newer feel. And, uh, you know, that's something that we're proud of, being able to incorporate a little bit of that in the interior as well. So, yeah. Jason, let's take a look on the inside here, uh, yeah. more of the molly panels. Um, this is what we've got mounted on the back side. Looks like you've got your bow and yes, sir. Uh, some other things in here. Yeah, I, I use that for the bow because it's a little bit less concerning on somebody breaking in and actually getting something that they could hurt themselves with. I mean, uh, so we, it's on the outside of the mollies because it's don't have to be quite as secure as the firearms. Right. Well, while we're inside here, yep. let's uh, talk about this interior. We uh, use cat skin custom uh, seat covers from BJ's Off Road. BJ's has helped us a whole lot on getting our seals, all the factory things that we needed, been big help on the aftermarket as well, but. We ordered these custom uh, stitched uh, cat scans from them. As you can see, they got the maroon stitching. We went with that diamond plate design. We kind of like that that kind of upgraded look. We've also incorporated heated seats. This has heated seats in the rear as well. We've used our console here. Just if I, I won't be able to turn them on because the vehicle's right. not on. But uh, we've got you know dual stage. Uh, how you want them? If you want them really hot or sure. just a little hot. But uh, see if we can get some of the detail there. That's a really good looking seat. Oh, it is definitely comfortable. Cleans up well too. Uh, I really do like the cat skin stuff. Uh, we can move up here to the front of this rig. Uh, of course, we still have the cat skin. So. Yeah. If we also the have, you can see the heated seat control there, just right to on the right side of the right and left of the console. Mm -hmm. there. Each passenger. We uh, got with Dakota Digital um, on this thing, and we've actually got retrofit gauges in this. Uh, they look original, but they are actually Dakota Digital gauges. Very steady, very nice, and very good fitment. I, hats off to Dakota Digital on the job that they've done on incorporating them to be what they are. Yeah, those look great. So uh, we are, we're very happy with that um, that aspect of things. Yeah. We also moved, uh, if you can see, you might could shoot the other side there a little bit, but uh, you can see that we've got Alpine tweeters and six and a halves. They are not in the factory location because the factory location was down very low. Right. And it blocked a lot of our sound, so we, we didn't want that, so we, we actually moved those around. Right. Uh, I could, we could, uh, we could uh, turn the key on here and just kind of look inside. Yeah, let's see that. You know, we've got a mount to switch it. That, 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 that might look better. You can kind of see our Alpine unit coming to life there. We did in, uh, use the factory console that actually up top that still incorporates uh, that as well. Another thing we haven't mentioned is we incorporated a Dana 300 transfer case, which these did not come out with. We liked that because it was gear driven. First off, it gives us a little bit lower uh, crawl range. But we uh, got with Bohemoth and got a uh, twin stick option here to put in because we did a flip kit on the Dana 300. It actually is coming off the other side than they originally came from. So we used that and we put these in so we could lock in our high and our low on our front or rear axle, whatever right. we would need uh, off-roading. So that's a great option. We also use uh, our guys over at Side by Side Radios. We use these radios a lot on all of our things. They're on a little bit different band than a CB. Uh, they have very good... Uh, range on them and things so uh, I also have the handhelds that go with that but we got that and we put that in this rig too because we do use it quite often as a rider with our buddies and stuff. We also have the lockers we used the factory where it was the two and four wheel drive flip switch we took that out we actually 
added push buttons for the lockers front and rear here so this is actually right there josh is how we uh get our lockers to lock in and out on yeah. the front and rear axle this is also to do with the dakota digital how you reset your mileage and trip and stuff so nice it is it is a very nice feature uh, again we incorporated the uh we put the factory above the head console in it and uh, as you can see our self-defense uh, guns there are also mounted uh, above it's i don't know if you so ever got them in the I got one of the self-defense shotguns there in that for a self-defense guy. Yep. Very cool. So this thing is just your ultimate all-purpose everyday driver. The thing I like about the Wagoneers, Josh, is it's the thing that you can take to Grandma's house on Christmas. You can take it to the beach with your surfboard, and you can take it overland and off-road and on the trip for Christmas to get your tree. So. Right. Uh, I just think it's one of the most versatile rigs out there. I think it was uh, overlooked in this time period a little bit for what it could be. Um, but we have taken the best of the new world and put it into the retrofit of the old. And uh, we're, we're really proud about this build. We have another one coming out. It'll be a blue one. It'll be a little bit more geared for a, um, I would say more for originality. It'll still be at this same ride height, but it, it'll be a little more regional. But uh, we're very proud of these builds. We've spent a lot of time on them. Uh, we've got a lot of people involved. Uh, everything from the AC that's different in them to the, I mean, the, a lot of suspension upgrades was one of the biggest things. Yeah, for sure. It's. Uh... We got two and a half inch exhaust. We do have headers on these rigs. Uh, I don't care to fire it up for you. If you want to hear that camshaft a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's uh, let's get in there and take a listen to it. Uh, here at NEA Performance, we're a BTR dealer, and uh, we used a BTR Stage 2 truck cam for this particular rig to keep us some down low torque. Our engine builder, Matt, here, uh, he kind of lays these things out for us and gets what we need going. Uh, he's incorporated cathedral port heads on this, aluminum, uh, all aluminum heads. We've got aluminum 5.3 block to keep a little bit of weight off that front end. Uh, we've got flat top pistons in this thing. We've got probably around 10 and a half, 11 to 1 compression in it. Um, so, you know, this thing, it pulls very strong. We've got a very low first gear in this six-speed transmission with these four tens, so we got a lot of pull out of the, out of the gate right there, um, uh, which, which, you know, really, really makes this thing come alive. I mean, it's really just a pleasure to drive this thing, uh, but we've got a converter from Florida Torque Converters in it um, that we, we've got about a 2,800 uh, to 3,000 stall on to let us get up in that RPM band enough to really feel that LS motor kick in. But, we're, we're very happy with the meal. Like I say, we may incorporate a supercharger on this thing uh, shortly, but right now we're enjoying driving it just, just the way it is. So, uh, we're, like I say, we're happy with the meal. We put electric fans on it. We, we used a factory radiator. We got electric fans and things like that. So, you know, try to get all the horsepower we can out of that 5.3, but we're happy with it for sure. Jason, let's take a look at the front end again on this rig and uh, talk well, about the lights a little bit. We'll go ahead and kick these lights on. Uh, that's the parking lights, as you can probably see the backlit stuff on the road factory. Mm -hmm. Kind of keeps it uh, that, that newer feel to it, you know. Uh, it's not just a stock rig. Now those amber rough country lights are switchable to uh, yes, sir. bright white, aren't they? Yeah, I can uh, switch them to the bright light there, maybe not blind you. I'm, I'm not sure if it's up. Is that the center bar? That's the center bar. That's yeah. the center bar, and then uh, right here will be the outside bar. Yep. And then the main headlights you've switched out. The main headlights, I'll kick them on for you. There, we upgraded them with the LED lights too. From uh, we use Putco LEDs, uh, H11s, I believe, and those are yeah. could be H13s. I, I might be wrong. On that. So plenty of visibility on, plenty. on it this. It really thing. made a, the drivability at night much more pleasurable. These things are. I think your cell phone has more light on it than they had uh, originally. <laughs> Yeah, it looks really good. We appreciate everybody for uh, walking around our wagon here and checking out uh, all the upgrades and things we've done to it. Um, and uh, 
Josh, why don't we just take this thing out and see what it'll do off road and go for a little bit of ride over here and see see what uh, this thing really does. Sounds good. Let's do that.